fascination. Oh. It, it, I mean, it's just, it's all kind of colors. But anyway, you would tell the bakery gentleman, you would say, so please, Mr. Baker, please concoct this cake that I can then have transported post haste by the most careful conveyance possible down to Kentucky where self-same person that I was describing before will get this cake and, and glory in and potentially waller in this cake as a result of reaching this fabulous milestone on the fucking interwebs. And, and now, was that hard? So I should ask for a celebratory cake. Well, I would think that fits the occasion. And by the way, I'm not going to do It's nobody's birthday. It's not, not a birthday cake. <laughs> the best you're going to get from me is me finding a bakery in Louisville and giving him my credit card number and saying, bring this to Middletown. I'll tell you one thing. If you give somebody down here your credit card number and I get a hold of them, it'll be a whole <laughs> different story. All right, anyway. You didn't say anything about size, though. Again, I don't know how to do it. Ma- size matters in cake. That's what Size I matters in cake is what I'm going to tell you. It doesn't have to be goddamn ridiculous like on the Food Network where four people have to carry it in, but it should be a... A good, healthy, and I mean that in the substantial portion and not the actual fucking meaning of the word way, a good, healthy-sized cake. See, this is the information you're giving me. I should call up and request a healthy-sized celebratory cake. Well, and, and it should be, you, should tell the, you should tell the baker gentleman. I want it to be white, say, but it can also be food-colored. Well, you can also tell the baker gentleman, you can say, and it should say on the top of this cake, Congratulations on your 100,000th. <laughs> okay. All right. There you go. We'll see what we can do about And don't this. even need any candles. That was, that was my next question. No, don't need candles for this. All right. Uh, but uh, speaking of having things transported places, I would like to, as I do at the top of every week's program, this is like an ongoing situation. Other people give you the, the pandemic update. I give you the JimCornette.com customer update. If you have ordered, and almost everyone in the world has over the last week or 10 days, merchandise from JimCornette.com, you're fucked. You're officially fucked. No, um, it's not a hopeless task yet, but I am behind. And as of this program, Friday, April 10th, this morning, and I've shipped for an hour every morning this week and still can't keep up with the demand. I've, I've restocked my shipping supplies. I've restocked burger towels. I've sorted through and trying to get an inventory on what we've got because the Wrestling Gold 5-disc 10-hour DVD set in the library case for only $9 autographed is just about sold out. People have taken that word to heart. And they are getting these orders in, which is one of the reasons why we're so swamped. Uh, But as of this morning, almost everything ordered through last Saturday, the 4th, has been shipped and is either at your doorstep, already in your hands, or on its way to you. Uh, The Mid-Atlantic film sets, the DVD sets, which we don't keep a ton of in stock uh, uh, except for the holidays, that are all custom-made. Those are, we are custom making more as we speak. Those take a little bit longer as do the straight shooting series DVD sets, but for the price and the, the sheer length alone, I'm not saying they're great, but they're long. Uh, you know, you can't beat it with a stick, but anyway, uh, if you order at jimcornet.com, be aware, uh, it's still going to be a, a seven day turnaround from the time I get the order till the time that I can get it, uh, shipped out. And every morning, You know this because you talk to me every day. Every morning I get up, I'm at the post office at 9 o'clock. I'm there for a little over an hour. I come home and I start again on uh, filling the orders, the packages, the envelopes. And I stop in time to eat dinner and and fall asleep that night. And I get up the next day and do the same thing again, except for when we're recording these programs. And that is now my life. So I'm quarantined. I wouldn't have time to go and see anybody if I could go anywhere. Uh, but I'm I'm making sure that the folks that are cooped up in their various orifices all around the world, and it, I'll tell you one thing, it is goddamn monotonous to be cooped up in an orifice. Uh, I want to make sure you got your entertainment, folks. These classic wrestling DVDs, the interview series is the classic wrestling action. The Houston DVD is flying off the shelves. Uh, so anyway, 
I'm going to try to have an update on what may be sold out soon and what we might have more of on the drive through this week. Okay. Well, let me ask you, because I do talk to you and you are excessively busy, the busiest retirement in wrestling history. Are you busier now than you were when you were a photographer and you were going to all the different shows and doing various things? Because I imagine that was a lot of work. You go to the shows, you take the photos, you have to get the photos developed, you have to arrange all the photos you pick up, bring them to the shows, sell them to Christine Jarrett, work with the wrestlers, get more photos. Are you busier now than you were then? Oh, God, yes. Um, because then it was, you know, I was really only going to three shows a week, usually, unless Funk was in the territory, right? If Funk was going to wrestle Lawler, I was there, Memphis, wherever the fuck it was. Um, but three shows a week and had, uh, most of the time, the weekends to re-rack some of this stuff, sort through negatives and find things. But for the, the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday was the big run of the week. And sometimes I didn't sleep or maybe a couple hours between Tuesday night and Wednesday or Wednesday night and Thursday from t- t- taking the orders once I got home from the show and then finding the negatives and putting them in the sleeve and then getting them downtown to be developed at the RIP Full Tone Photo Company. Uh, somebody actually tweeted a picture of the sign from Full Tone Photo Company, the place I used to get my pictures processed here in Louisville uh, the place a you while put back. Out of business. The place you put out of business when you became a manager. <clears throat> yeah, I, I quit doing the pictures and they they folded shortly thereafter. I don't. It's like... What did I tell you this year? I announced that I'm retiring from professional wrestling and every show across the country and across the world immediately shuts down. I I think it's no coincidence. (laughs) I'm just telling you. Anyway, uh, and tell the folks, and when we do have time, and I promise I'm, I'm, I'm not blowing you folks that have already sent me money off uh, in either case. uh, We're going to, I'm going to get these orders done this weekend. I'm going to get all caught up. I've got three long days uh, Saturday, Sunday, and well, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, to, uh, to get these orders caught up with. And then we're going to soon add extra material to the Patreon, which is setting the world on fire. Thank you everybody that's joined. Cause you're getting all the Jim Cornette experiences and the drive throughs from the very beginning. And you reminded me that I've been perpetrating this fucking scam now for pretty much about seven years, right? So a lot of people have have come along that didn't ever hear the early shows. Some of the early shows may not deserve to be heard again, but nevertheless, we're going to play them. Uh, and that's five bucks a month, and you're getting the uh, the drive-throughs and the experiences more added every week, and eventually they'll all be there, but from from scratch, from the start of the whole fucking thing, right? That's right, patreon.com slash coronet. $5 a month gets you into the archive tier where we have classic episodes going back to the beginning. In 2013, we are now, I think in March of 2014, a new batch of episodes go up each and every Sunday night. The episodes that just went up this past week, Jim, were your talks with Lisa Marie Varon, uh, also known as Victoria in the WWE, and actually a really interesting one. I think a lot of listeners who always want to know your background with Rick Rubin would want to hear. You and Cat Collins. I remember show. that. I remember that. Katsky. We talked about the eccentricness that is Rick Rubin. Anyway, that's on the Patreon. And all those shows that are up already, it literally pennies an hour for your entertainment while you're sitting around, you know, twiddling your franks and beans. I don't know what you're doing. While I don't know uh, what, in the, and I don't want to know what everybody's doing while they have time and they're, they're quarantined in their various fucking orifices anyway and in a lot of cases you find out the origin of why jim hates someone because i just heard from a few people this week they go oh so that's why he hates kevin steen because you know this is 2013 2014 this is a long time ago uh the origin stories of all of the uh the fucking rivalries and uh, aggravations and etc speaking of uh, of aggravations do you know what's super annoying hearing ads in the middle of your favorite podcast right Know what's even more annoying? Having eczema and trying zillions of treatments that don't work. Super annoying, right? Until now, we're GladSkin. We're an over-the-counter eczema treatment that is clinically proven to reduce eczema itch and redness without any harmful ingredients. No steroids, no alcohol, no fragrance, no preservatives, none of that stuff. So you can't overuse it. Oh, and GladSkin is safe for everyone, even babies three months and older. 
If you can use some eczema relief, get GLADSKIN today at GLADSKIN.com. And for a limited time, get 20% off with the code PODCAST20. Again, get 20% off with PODCAST20 at GLADSKIN.com. And we have a gladness guarantee. So if you don't absolutely love it, return it for your money back. We can help make your eczema less annoying. Wish we could do the same for podcast ads. They should have called this documentary series Ruthless Aggravation. Instead of ruthless aggression on the WWE network, I've, and I'm not going to knock all of it. I'm going to knock a little bit of it, but I'm not going to knock all because it, it was easy to watch and it's a company documentary. So, you know, yes, what are they going to say in some instances? Um, but there was just, just a few things that I was like, Oh my God. Um, uh, you challenged me to, I just watched the first episode. You challenged me to, I'm going to watch this all the way through eventually, because especially since I'm, I'm on it somewhere, unless they fucking got mad at what I said and cut me out. Uh, by the time it's over with, I'll have been on it. Um, so I'm going to watch the whole series, but the first one, it just, you know, it, they do a great job. The, the folks at the studio, the editors and the producers and the people that put together the, the footage and et cetera. Um, you know, so I can't fault their programs cause they're so professional. They're the best looking ones, but at the same time, you have to know what actually happened on any given incident that they do a documentary about instead of learning from their documentaries. You know what I'm saying? You already have to know, and then you watch theirs cause it's got the cool footage and shit and nice comments, but you already have to know cause you can't just take their word for it. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes perfect sense. That's the story of WWE. Is you see one of their documentaries, and it's some bullshit history that never actually happened. There are elements of the truth mixed in with the McMahon rewriting of history. Yes, or and and they're good. They're good glossers because they gloss over things. Um, but the the season one or episode one started out with the recap of the Monday Night Wars, and I think. We can probably all agree now in hindsight that what I said in 1998 was has come to pass. The Attitude Era, the Monday Night Wars, not just one company, but the whole thing where they just tried to fucking just put each other out of business weekly for two years and hot-shotted everything was the worst thing to ever happen to the fucking wrestling business in retrospect. Because not only because they've never come close to that fucking level of popularity, but also because they just burnt through every fucking thing. Not only every personality, but every angle, everything that could be done to the human body, every kind of goofy shit. They, you know, uh, exposed whatever they wanted to expose. Then they tried to make people believe other shit was real. They came up with work shoot angles. They just they went through everything we could have done for fucking 40 years in two years. And finally, but in in their term, the Attitude Era beats WCW with considerable help, not mentioned from all of the WCW executives that botched the whole thing up and then the merger. But they, you know, I I saw Brian Gerwitz for the first time. I don't think I ever met him. I didn't even remember him if he ever came down here to Louisville and they didn't come often, the writers. But the bug-eyed frog-looking fuck that had the fight with Paul Lee or the argument with Paul Lee at the office in Stanford. Do you remember hearing this story? Vaguely. What was that? That was when Paul Lee had his blow up with Stephanie. Well, I, 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 which one, I don't know. I, you know, but no, the, the, the story went out, whatever the timing was, it, it, it wasn't long. It was the beginning of the end maybe, but the story went out that Paul Lee and this Brian Gerwitz, and because I guess he's the comedy writer. He was all about comedy. Now he's the guy that works for The Rock in his movie company. And he was just, you know, he was one of these writers that came into the fucking wrestling business somehow and spent a while there. And The Rock liked him because he had good, funny lines. So that's, you know, whatever. But if if you think me and Shitstain would be exact opposites, I can imagine Paul Lee with his background in the business and the way he liked to do things and the way that he probably was the smartest guy at what they needed to do at that time in the fucking room. 
And he's got to put up with this fucking bug-eyed fucking frog-looking fuck that even he thinks he can whip. And they ended up in some type of screaming fucking yelling match. 